Your beat included writing a lot about the mafia, the Yakuza. Tell us about them. Who are the uh, Yamaguchi Gumi? That's the largest group, right? The Yamaguchi Gumi have been around for six generations, and they are kind of the Walmart of organized crime. Um, there are 86,000 known mafia members in, in, Jap- in Japan right now, and the Yamaguchi Gumi is about 40,000. That gives them about half of the market. They're centered in Kobe, where they have an entire city block, uh, like a fortress, for their offices. And uh, they're involved in all kinds of uh, financial activity, um, much much more than just loan sharking and protection money. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year, Lehman Brothers Japan was ripped off for $350 million in a very elaborate fraud, uh, of which the Yamaguchi Gumi played some significant part. That was the illegal fraud in which Lehman Brothers was ripped off, as opposed to some others we may know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you know uh, they were the victims in that one. Um, does a mafia serve a different function in society, that's probably a funny way to put it, uh, but role in the economy or role in, in Japanese life than uh, what we think of as the mafia here? Well, well first of all, the, the mafia in Japan is very, um, it's, it's a legal entity like the Rotary Club. It's not illegal. So, for what, example, what do you mean the mafia is legal? Okay, for example, um, I brought this with you. I'll have this over. Here's a mafia, uh, Yakuza fan magazine. Okay, which uh, I can't read a word of because it's in Japanese. Here, here's a, here's a, a list of the, 90, of the 90 top members of the Yamaguchi Gumi, including their biographies and past criminal records. And you can buy this on any newsstand. Buy this on any newsstand. Um, yeah, uh, a, a comic book devoted to the lives of the current leader and my favorite Yakuza, Goto Tadamasa. And who buys these yeah. things? Who's yeah. the fan base? Well, the fan base is the Yakuza, their family, and, and your typical white-collar worker who dreams of having a glamorous life, um, you know, uh, doing whatever the hell he wants, having lots of chicks, lots of money. Listeners, anybody else familiar with the Japanese mafia or wants to call in with any questions for Jake Edelstein? an American who worked for the Yomiuri Shinbun on the police beat in Tokyo. His new book is called Tokyo Vice, an American reporter on the police beat in Japan. Let me go to the policing. How do you think big city policing is different in Japan than here in New York or elsewhere in the United States? Here, I'll, I'll hand you this sweet I brought over to you. It's um, you sweet, and sour, all, sweet and sour uh, squid while I'm answering the question. All kinds of props. I like squi- sweet and sour squid. I'm, I'm glad not many people do. My kids love it. Um, First of all, the, you know, the Japanese have the the police box system. So almost in every street corner in Japan, in a major in, in, a, in a major city, you have the police somewhere standing there, you know, giving directions. So the police presence is huge. That that's certainly a deterrent to to crime. And the police don't aren't in their cars, isolated from the public. They're walking. They're on bicycles. Um, and the other thing, of course, about you know the police in Japan that is much different from the way it is here is that. Um, they, they tend to be friendlier and cultivate a more friendly image. I mean, the police, Tokyo police even have a mascot um, named Pipokun. Uh, so um, you were the only American reporter on the beat. How did it affect your reporting and your ability to report? Well, at first there were some adjustment issues. The first time I went to the, the Omiya police station where I was assigned to, um, I went in to make, say hello to the vice captain, and he assumed that I was an Iranian that had escaped from the holding cells and called a bunch of cops to, like, grab me before I could escape. That, sent, that made sort of a crazy tone. But, but in general, um, once you demonstrate that you understand the subtleties of Japanese culture and that you can be polite and well-behaved and that you understand the cop mindset, I didn't have any problem um, as a police reporter. Phil in Queens. You're on WNYC. Hi, Phil. Yes, hi. Um, I want to ask the author, it's my understanding that the Yakuza and other gangs um, all own firearms and use them, despite the almost universal ban of firearms in Japan. So since many liberals in the United States would love to see a universal ban of firearms, I'm interested in your perspective, given the fact that where these things exist. The bad guys still always get guns and use them anyway. Well, actually, I mean, there, it, it is true that unless you're a cop, the only, about the only people with guns are Yakuza. But at the same time, they've made the penalties for using a gun so so odious. Um, longer prison sentences for owning one, another sentence for firing one, uh, a stronger sentence for injuring someone with it, that um, lately you see the Japanese samurai sword making a comeback as a weapon of uh, of 
assassinating your rivals. Uh, there was a couple. There was an incident a couple weeks ago where an Inagawa Kai member had his jaw sawed off with a sword and died. Um, so if you make guns, uh, the penalties for owning guns so horrible that you know using what, what guarantees like forty years in prison, even the Yakuza are a little reluctant to use. So them. wait, do you get a shorter prison term? For killing somebody with a samurai sword than you do with a, with a firearm? A- absolutely the weapon of choice for the smart Yakuza. Really? Because there, you would actually get a shorter prison term potentially. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, there's, there's the, you know, I mean, it's just a straight violation of the Juto Ho Yihan. Um, sorry, uh, uh, the sword and firearms law. You know, there's no aggravating factors there. You even report on the sex industry and its connections to the Yakuza. And I say even because... You you write about ending up spending a night as 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 a host and getting paid for sexual favors. Do I understand this correctly? No, 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 no. That is completely wrong. I did not get paid for doing it for any sexual favors as a host. That's that's that's. Uh, or somebody uh, try to or how uh, close no, did no, you get a, a there? No, a host a host is a host has nothing to do with um with 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 sex. A host is kind of like a fake boyfriend. The woman comes in, you pour the drinks, you light her cigarettes, you charm her, and other th- and. And make her feel like she's she's got a boyfriend, and try to get her to buy the expensive champagne, like an escort service in the legit yeah, sense. Yeah, like an escort service. I, I I was never paid for for sexual favors as a as a host. In, in college, when I was working as a massage therapist, I might have crossed the line of legitimate massage therapy, but I prefer not to go there. This may be more than we want to know. 